Hi and welcome to Infertility Dialogues. I'm Supriya and this series is my attempt at starting conversations around the taboo topic of infertility. Today I'm talking to Dr. Kalyani Srimali, who is an award-winning senior gynecologist and infertility specialist at the Nova Fertility Clinic in Dover. Dr. Kalyani has over 10 years of experience in almost all uh, areas of assisted reproduction and she has herself done more than a thousand egg retrievals and embryo transfers. Today she's going to talk to us about a uh, little bit more detail about assisted reproduction, what it entails, what are the risks and what should one keep in mind before starting their IVF journey. Hi Dr. Kalyani, it's great to have you here. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. Uh, and my first question uh, is about, you know, the common misconceptions that people have around infertility treatments. Infertility is something which I feel people have never taken seriously, especially in India. Particularly, infertility, infertility is always related to the females. That is the misconception what we have in India. But let me tell you all, according to WHO, incidence of infertility due to males is almost 40%. The other common misconception is that increasing age of the women may lead to infertility. While it's true that women's fertility decreases with age, women aren't the only ones who experience fertility changes as they get older. Even men have the increased age that leads to this infertility. Increase in the paternal age may lead to genetic issues after the age of 40. A man is likely to start experiencing a decrease in the semen volume and motility. The other misconception is if you already have a child, you don't have to worry about infertility. Even if a couple already has a child or children, they are experiencing difficulty in getting pregnant later. And this is called a secondary infertility. The next misconception is that your health doesn't impact fertility. In reality, one of the largest factors for fertility for men and women comes down to health. Especially lifestyle addictions like smoking, drinking, tobacco chewing, and of course the late night works and the frequent travels. All this leads to decrease in the semen as well as the egg quality due to the stress level as well as because of the, some bad chemicals known as ROS causing the damage to the gametes. Effort doesn't always directly translate to success. Couples shouldn't have to feel like they are not already doing their best. But they need to understand when is the right time to approach or schedule a visit with a fertility consultant. So is there a difference between treatment approaches in different countries? Could you give us some details on that? Yes. Most of the countries have the fertility covered under insurance or by the government health schemes like United Kingdom or the USA. They have the fixed protocols for the assessment of the couples which they need to follow for the evaluations. Hence. The couple, if needed, with higher treatments, are already in the chain of getting the expert opinion from the fertility yeah. specialist. This way, most of the couples get adequate information and treatment. As this are funded and they don't need to spare, they usually undergo IVF treatments quite easily. And of course, sooner than in India, has the same subgroup of patients they have to spend there from their own pocket. While in India, the couples and the family especially feels Everything will be normal if they keep on trying. Most of the time, the couple approaching us have already been trying for more than five years. That's a great amount of time. The treatments what they have taken are from the sadhus or the tantrics or as we know, you know, from, from the Vedas or something like that. Many times they have been taking oral drugs dispensed by the medical shops which are off the counter and which is the main cause towards the depletion of the egg reserve that we are seeing nowadays. Hence, when a patient comes to us, even though they are young, we see cases of low ovarian reserves and these cases have actually increased a lot and it pains my heart to give them the option for the egg donation if they don't have adequate number of eggs. Awareness of the treatments available in India is still not there. Most of the population feels they don't need to visit a specialist as infertility is not a disease. But in fact, WHO has declared infertility as a disease that is treatable with medications and procedures. And what would you say are some of the key risks associated with these assisted reproduction procedures and what must people keep in mind and how can these risks be prevented? 
let's discuss some of the risk factors advanced age it can be either male or female pcos that's the polycystic ovarian syndrome that due to no release of the eggs and irregular menses due to the hormonal imbalance the pregnancy may not occur also the oocyte or the egg quality that we say may be compromised the most common in india is the black fallopian blocked fallopian tubes tuberculosis being the most common reason in india that is leading to the genital tb and then blocked or the fluid filled tubes resulting in not able to conceive or even ending up in an ectopic pregnancy that is the tubal pregnancy low sperm count or no sperm count as it is believed to be a female oriented problem most of the times the husbands are not tested just a simple test of the semen analysis will give us so many answers baby is born through both the gametes please remember any thoughts on what are the factors that could improve the chances of conception like what can people do to really improve their uh, success rates timely planning of the baby at the correct age is the number one factor if not then plan on freezing your eggs or the embryos know your amh or your ovarian reserve to plan things on time good healthy lifestyle no smoking alcohol timely sleep pattern is important as well try to understand your fertile time period or the fertile window and be around with each other to schedule your truths accordingly understand the physiology visit a specialist and understand your body it is not a bad idea if you are referring to a specialist physical exercise like yoga running or any form is always beneficial especially if you have an irregular period please get yourself evaluated for pcos and keep your weight in control same for the males keep your weight in control to avoid hypertension diabetes which may affect the sperm quality to stay away from radiation to use desktops instead of the laptops have low carb diet high protein diet always advisable with lots of antioxidants like lemon beetroot oranges garlic you name it or even supplements like vitamin c is important would you say like alternative therapies like acupuncture acupressure reiki energy healing can can these things boost chances of conception as well interesting question I don't have any personal experience with acupuncture but yes trials are ongoing in UK for the results but from what I hear it has tremendous benefits yes i'm a true believer of fertility yoga it does help to improve your blood circulation to the reproductive organs decreases the stress meditation surely helps to stay positive and detoxifies your body there is of course a lot of r&d that keeps happening in the assisted reproduction technologies so any thoughts on any new treatment procedures that are coming up yes many advanced technologies are available now in india as well like we have got the facility of endometrial receptivity array pgs pgd max dna dna fragmentation index of the semen sample when we have got you know multiple ivf failure there's also something which is coming up has known as the three parent ivf which is currently not available in india okay my last question for the day is what would your advice be for your patients or for the listeners who are either considering or undergoing an ivf procedure currently please do not consider infertility as a taboo enjoy your journey be there be there for each other the right and timely treatment will help you to achieve the pregnancy faster having a healthy baby is important and not the process of achieving it have the faith and trust and the miracle will surely happen do not lose hope we have various treatments now available and having that pregnancy is possible for most of the patients do speak to your doctor about any doubts you have and do not delay taking the advice from your doctor baby is for you and not for the family discuss with your family about the options available or discuss with your husband and take the decision as a couple stay positive that is the most important thing family planning around infertility comes down to personal choices that vary among the couples every path looks different and each individual choice is valid but take that one step visit your fertility specialist and you will have that pregnancy thank you thank you dr kalyani that was really really insightful uh, really appreciate your time today 
and for the listeners i hope you got some valuable information out of this and hope you will consider these uh, insights that dr kalyan has shared before or during your assisted reproduction procedure thank you and listening to infertility dialogue